more series for the day, and it is the grand final. We already saw EU. Now it's time to get our champion in North America. And the question is, is it going to be another team taking it for the first time, or are we going to see the return of Method Orange here? I mean, they had a pretty darn good showing so far. They really have, but this was the series that roadblocked them, Zico. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure how repeatable what the Super Frogs could do in uh, in the top bracket earlier is going to be because we know that they beat a, a matchup that they kind of shouldn't win with the Roblox Druid. So that one, we can kind of write that off as not that high possibility, right? Okay. Then they won with the Mage uh, and the Mage Lock Druid. Honestly, again, it came down to just playing incredible and also came down to Method Black trying to deny the big map pick and having it backfire a little bit. I feel like if that matchup played on a smaller map, that map goes to Method Orange. The one that I'm that I'm kind of torn on is the Double Warlock game. I feel like that game was close, but I feel like that one also looked like something repeatable. So I'm not sure. Uh, I think a lot of it comes down to the blind. I think Super Frogs for sure should lock in the Double Warlock in the blind again, because then, I feel like, at worst, they're going to be playing against the Demon Hunter Munkin, and I feel like that's kind of a fine matchup. They already won that with the Frost Mage, and I think that if they face the Demon Hunter and the, the uh, DK again, that's for sure their best bet against it. I don't think Roguelock Druid, for example, would be their best bet against it. But then again, Roguelock Druid is kind of good against Munkin. A lot of things to think about here. Like, that, that really is there, the situation so we're things. in. Yeah, and I do want to ask right now, Zika, while we are kind of chewing on all of this, this is a best of seven as well. Is that going to favor the team like Super Frogs, who are throwing a jillion compositions at Method Orange? Or is it going to favor Method Orange because they have a little bit more time to figure this out? Some of the matchups that are a little bit more volatile may go their way, and then they can pick up that momentum. Who do you think is favored because we go to a best of seven now? Well, I think the best of seven is going to favor the team that likes to play on the small maps. I think in this case, that's going to be Method Orange. Method Orange, um, they just have to deal with two large maps. And then, of course, the two medium-sized maps, Tiger Speak and Nagrand Arena. So, the line pick is going to be on Nagrand. If they manage to, whoever wins that is going to have a big lead in general, but that's going to be out of the way immediately. If they can deny one large map in a best of seven, that's huge. Because after that, we're going to see kind of what we saw in Europe, where people are going to be kind of in awkward spots where they might have to pick Mugambala again, might not be super comfortable on that map. And uh, just in general, if you're relying on those larger maps to kind of get your advantage, you will run out of those larger maps. Whereas if your strategy is to kind of be on those smaller maps, you, there's way more of those. There's Blade's Edge, Dalaran Sewers, Hook Point, Ruins, and so on. So uh, I think uh, Method Orange is favored in that sense, but I think Super Frogs have more curveballs Okay, curveballs versus somebody who would rather be on smaller maps. Those are two big factors. We also need to think about what the day looks like and what the whole tournament does look like, what the whole year is going to look like. These are the standings before we got to this tournament. So Method Orange could potentially get 220 points here. The Super Frogs could, this is some quick math, could potentially tie the boys. So the boys obviously are going to get those third place points. Then, which puts, that's 80, correct, Zico? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so you get 80 for third, 100 for second, and 120 for first. So. 220 plus 80, 300. 120 plus 180, 300. 300 equals 300. The boys equals the Super Frogs. If we see the Super Frogs take this series. Yep. I told you that all tied up. Much. That definitely wasn't confusing for anyone at home. I'm glad we managed to get that um, all sorted out. But definitely all the points going to be ultra important for these teams. It's such a close race between a few of the teams in North America, and we really have seen where it can be anyone's game. There's not just one team that has been dominating. Super Frogs winning the first one. Um, then you have the boys winning the second. Method Orange, they've been on the... This is sort of uh, what we wanted to see from Method Orange, because they didn't make the first cup. They got second in the second cup, and now potentially could get first. And if they're able to get that sort of momentum back in their, their step, that's going to be really, really important. Yeah, the, definitely an important thing. And, I, you know, I, after coming out of a game five like that, is that something that is going to rev you up? You got to think about it. You can let us know in the chat right now who you think is going to take this series. We know that a best Ooh. of seven, yeah, all of a sudden after they win a series more people going to be jumping on the ship with method orange we saw for one of the first times that i can ever remember the chat actually going against method orange in the last series after they suffered that devastating blow of a 3-0 but 
Super Whoa, Frost. What? Alrighty, here we go. Method Orange Grand Finals versus Super Frog. We're caught a little bit off guard here because Method Orange, they're going to be locking in the Windwalker Death Knight against Super Frog's Rogue Lock Druid. And I think this is a good matchup here for Method Orange. I just wanted to see Snuts on Destruction again. I'm just really sad about that here in game number one. But it's Snuts either way on that Assassination Rogue. They were able to beat the Demon Hunter Death Knight on Dalaran when these teams met earlier today. Perhaps the same is true here on the Grand Arena. Cubsy currently in a fear that was stolen by Mez. Now Mez, though, in a double mortal coil. Chanimal trying to set up off the back of that, but unable to. Denied now by Chun-Li. Sidu feared up. Mez and Trill both low on health. The Windwalker Monk is somewhat self-sustainable with likely expel harm being played, but a lot less self-sustainable than the Demon Hunter that Trill was playing, which means there will be more pressure on Sidu to heal his team throughout the match. And mana is slowly etching in favor of Cubsy, but a ton of damage now may force him to expend a lot of that mana. Chanimal boldly just counter-engaging on this smoke bomb, trying to build up some pressure for his team. Not able to find it. Iron Bark seems to be enough for Cubsy to stabilize Chanimal here in the grand final for North America. A best of seven to decide if the Super Frogs can tie the boys in points. Yep, definitely. You know, just taking a quick look at Trill's gear just to see exactly what he's doing. He often plays unique builds, uh, but Trill actually caught into a kidney shot. Could fall immediately into the bash. A beautiful setup by Super Frogs, and unfortunately, Method Orange, Trill with that relentless talent, got punished so hard he had every defensive except the trinket that he needed. Hi, Chihuahua. The Super Frog's going to be able to take the first one much quicker than we expected. Also, not necessarily the comp we expected from them, but definitely not the composition that we expected on the side of Method Orange Zico, let's break it down. All right, let's break down the compositions to begin with because everybody's confused right now why these teams are doing these comps. So what Super Frogs thought was that Method thought that Super Frogs would run double Warlock. And to counter the double Warlock, Method Orange was going to run the same thing that they did in game number one, but with the addition of Sidu on that Resto Druid. So no, actually, they thought that uh, Method Orange was going to run the Moonkin Demon Hunter. So they wanted to get the Roguelock Druid versus the Moonkin Demon Hunter here against Method Orange. Instead, Method Orange actually wins the blind pick here, but with that smoke bomb play from Snuts, they, they managed to apply a lot of pressure here onto Trill. Trill disrespecting a little bit, just kind of relying on that Iron Bark here from uh, Sidu to stabilize. And then we can see uh, Chanimal again getting Chaos Bolt after Chaos Bolt here, and then Trill is gonna get stunned up as Snuts, as uh, Cedar, sorry, gets caught up in that fear, and there it is. Stun and Mortal Coil combined together is going to take Trill down there before he can activate that Touch of Karma since he is playing that Relentless Talent, and I'm pretty sure, was he human? Yes. So there was a Mortal Coil overlap with that stun as well. Uh, so he, had, he had time, but I think he might have, I'm not exactly sure, but I think he might have gotten bashed on his trinket potentially, or he just didn't use it, because he definitely had enough time. He had time to drink it. He might not have expected bash. the bash, too. It could be a mistake. It could be a rare mistake in Trillville. Uh, yeah, you often do not see that in the forecast in Trillville. Usually it's all clear skies and perfect plays, but there were some mind games that happened. Then after that, mind games, they settle down, and then it is going to come down to what they can actually do on the Grand Arena. Now that that mind game phase of the blind pick is out of the way, what do you expect to see, Supertease? I mean, it's a little bit unfortunate, but it was really important to win the blind pick here. Fortunately for Method Orange, there is a limited number of big maps in the pool, which is obviously the territory that the Super Frogs want to bring the battle to. So here now on map two, maybe they try and swing a big map in their own favor, but we've already seen that Mage Warlock was effective for the team of Super Frogs on Tolveron, even against the Balanced Druid Demon Hunter, which is what Method Orange are likely to rely on to take out the Wizards on the big map. So I'm not sure if you're Method Orange, maybe you just take this, go to a map that you should win, get some confidence back, because that was it was like a mistake, but also a bit of a fluke. Uh, so now go to Dalaran, set something up that you should win. But even on Dalaran with the Demon Hunter Death Knight, they didn't win the last time that these teams met. So perhaps they should stay on the Windwalker Death Knights and just clean up their defense. How do, how do you feel about that Windwalker DK again? 
Honestly, I feel like the Demon Hunter DK and the Windwalker DK are both kind of favorable matchups here against the Super Frogs. It just comes down to cleaning up their gameplay a little bit. And I feel like maybe even on a small map, they can just go with Sidhu on the Rasta Shaman for that extra added comfort. Uh, I mean, I don't think he's been looking bad at all on the Druid or anything like that, but uh, having that extra comfort, grabbing your first win can definitely do a lot for the confidence of the team in general. So... Um, the Shaman is, is going to have a decent time here. You're going to be able to ground a lot of Chaos Bolts. You're not going to be necessarily running out of mana before the Druid since you can shut down a lot of those drinks on a small map like Dalaran Sewers. Uh, I think just Shaman, Demon Hunter, DK it up here. Grab yourself the, the high percentage win on Dalaran Sewers and then just kind of take it from there. Try to win on a disadvantageous map later on. It's still a long series for them to play, so they still have a lot of time to kind of work over what they should be doing in terms of the DK, uh, Demon Hunter versus the DK Windwalker and the Rustle Druid versus the Rust Shaman. How, how do you feel about Cena maybe coming in on the Shaman here? I don't think it's bad. I, I think Method Orange had a really good matchup the last time we saw this played out. Chanimals had an insane showing in that game. It was such a close match. They barely took down, I believe it was Mez in the match that we saw. Method Orange could have definitely won that game, and I think I, I like them setting that up once again because I think they can easily put a point back on the board just implementing the same strategy, trying to find the mana rifts onto Cubsy and eventually go after Chanimals when Cubsy doesn't have the mana to really heal him. Now, we've seen the composition that the Super Frogs are running on this map quite a bit, not only today, but throughout the weekend. Super Tease, how is it going to try to set up the second win for the Super Frogs? I mean, basically, there's two threats on the side of the Super Frogs. Nuts is building his Rogue to maximize Fan of Knives damage. So if there are three targets standing next to each other, Fan of Knives does incredibly massive damage, also applies poisons to the entire team. And basically, Method Orange need to avoid the destruction Warlock. And how do they do that? They play at Pillars, and when you're playing at pillars you're standing next to each other which then will increase and amplify the damage that snuts brings on the rogue so you stand in the open you have to pick your poison stand out in the open and deal with the warlock or stand at the pillar and try and line of sight and deal with this fan of knives build which is how the super frogs are able to find victory the last time that these teams went head to head earlier today okay very important to keep that in mind how can method orange stop that plan in its tracks eco well, I think it just comes down to uh, kind of what we already talked about a little bit. They just need to have Trill, Mana Burn, Cubsy down, apply the pressure there, have uh, Smez uh, just kind of sit on two channel and just try to shut down some of these big Chaos Bolts, have good rotation on their interrupts with the grounding, with the wind shear, and all the ranged kicks on these uh, New Age melees. And then, of course, I want to just see Sidhu when Cubsy actually runs out of mana. And this is a big thing that we have seen some of these uh, less, in, uh, less experienced teams not really capitalize on uh, I want to see just Sidhu running at their healer he's not gonna have that much healing himself to do his melees can kind of sustain themselves when Cubsy is out of mana they're gonna be super frogs are gonna be on the back foot so I want to see Sidhu chase the enemy healer of Cubsy make sure that he doesn't drink and then that way they get to utilize Trill instead of uh, basically chasing uh, Cubsy and making him run out of mana he can focus on just doing damage getting Channel to a point where Cubsy no longer can go for those drinks because if he does, then all of a sudden, uh, Chanimal is just going to go down to the damage of Meza and Trill. All right. Well, you heard the potential game plans. Let's see who can actually will theirs into reality. Super Frogs versus Method Orange. Super Frogs lead by one. I'm really wondering if the Super Frogs can pull off a 4-0. I, I feel like it shouldn't be possible compositionally, but they've been on fire today. Starting it off with that double destruction warlock now going back to something more standard However, we would say is weaker compositionally method orange have set themselves up for success here in game two as they look to tie the series back Cubsy playing feral affinity So maybe a new addition on his part to add some extra damage to the team Definitely could be an X factor for them to find a kill early on though We see method orange dealing devastation across the board here as Chanimal struggles to recover cover. Cubsy keeps it calm, cool, and collected, not over exchanging his defensive lineup and stabilizing the team efficiently. Yeah, Trill now caught into a kidney shot. Do they have any damage to really get anything rolling? I think it's unlikely at this point. I really like that offensive push there from Method Orange. They managed to get the Iron Bark from Cubsy as well as the Innervate for him to stabilize. But that offensive push a little later on will be significant, especially if they can coordinate their Maledict Trinkets once again. 
Nez jumping down. I think he was looking for a death grip on a Chanimals, but unable to find it. Now Infernal's gonna be dropped out as Chanimals looking to get aggressive. Cubs are pushing in, finds the Bash Cyclone. On to Sidu. Mez unable to deny. Now the Mortal Coil comes out. Trill could be in some trouble, but a nice death grip by Mez saves Trill from that Chaos Bolt. I mean, even still, Smoke Bomb gets dropped as they try to take down Trill. They overlap, they panic. Big panic attack for Method Orange, overlapping two major defensive cooldowns. Fortunately, they do line up for Infernals, but now they won't have them for Vendetta. And I like that Snuts and Chanimal are splitting up the threats that they bring in this fight. If they commit at the same time, then Method Orange makes one trade for two. Now Snuts has an opportunity to be the MVP. He engages. Crowd control looks good in this position. Will Anti-Magic Zone be enough to keep Trill alive? for c to get back to his team and start healing him up. It looks to be the case. Good plays there on Mez. Definitely keeping a level head, not overreacting earlier on. Having that answer for Vendetta was definitely key to Trill's survival. Yeah, Cubsy gonna be trying to create space once again. If he goes for a drink, it could give his team a decent lead. Trill into the kidney shot. Trill's been under so much pressure in this game. Sidu gets interrupted. Trill has to trinket out. He uses blur as well, and really there's no defense left. Look at Sidu, no trinket, no spirit link. Trill, no trinket, no darkness, no blur, no nothing. If Super Frost can get one more clean setup, Chanimals has unending resolve at Dark Soul. I wanna see it. If they can get crowd control on Sidu, use Dark Soul with the unending resolve, they could easily close out this game. All right, can they do it? Can the Super Frogs pull off a game two victory against Method Orange? Chandramul has pulled the trigger. He's ready to get going. Getting one Chaos Bolt, no denied on it. Trill realizes that situation was dire. Decides to play defensive at the boxes. The advantage that Dalaran Sewers provides is that there's always room for cover very close by, and they are going to exploit that here and now. As then Orange still have set themselves up for success despite that little bit of a panic attack earlier on. Their cooldowns are rotating back and readily available. It's unlikely that we see a target go down before dampening in this specific matchup. Our pressure has been back and forth. I'm curious to see if Cubsy can utilize that Feral Affinity to get a kill for his team. Snuts gets Death Grip down below. Good out positioning here by Method Orange to burst down Snuts. Cubsy moves in. Able to stabilize. No overreaction in terms of cooldown management. Cubsy now looking for crowd control onto Sidu. Managing to chain together Bash and Cyclone. Trill could now be in trouble as a result. He exchanges Blur to reduce damage during crowd control on his healer. Definitely a smart idea. Using that Consume Soul to get a shield, dispelling a heal over time effect. And definitely that Azerite trait, Burning Soul for the Demon Hunter, is paying its weight in gold, providing Trill a lot of self-sufficiency. Yes, Nuts has been instantaneously kicking Trill's eye beams. You can't even see it go off. It's being interrupted so fast. Snuts now kidney shotting Trill, but it doesn't look like there's much pressure. Snuts actually getting some bleeds up onto Sidu, potentially setting him up for a swap a little bit later on. Chanimals gets gripped away by Mez, trying to deny some of his destruction warlock damage, really bringing him into a bad position. Cubsy now is very close for Trill to actually swap over and try to get some mana rifts if he so chooses. Kidney shot now onto Mez with a smoke bomb, gets dropped out. Chanimals looking for some damage. Sidu with a beautiful grounding totem shuts down that Chaos Bolt and keeps Mez alive. Any pre tremors Chanimals fear, really good shutdown by Sidu, denying damage and crowd control, securing a lead for his team now. That panic attack. There was no opening now for the Super Frogs to take advantage of with Darkness. Rotated back and available. Spirit Link Totem as well. The mana lead is establishing itself here for Method Orange. Unless Cubsy can do what he's doing right now, Trill actually gives up on trying to deny it. I think Cubsy has managed to reset his mana, which I was really surprised to see here on Dalaran Sewers. Is he going to reset his mana and get defensive cooldowns from Mez at the same time? No, he didn't. What happened, Cubsy? I'm not sure, but unfortunately he wasn't able to find the drink that he needed and things are looking good for Method Orange. Chanimal's looking to get really aggressive with the Infernals. Can he get the Cataclysm? No, he's getting chain interrupted, forced to gate away. Cubsy sitting down for a drink. Chanimal's kiting. Cubsy just hiding in plain sight. Did he get any mana back there? Barely any at all. Mez needs to not overextend. Sidu on top of him, though, drops the Earthen Shield Totem, giving his team a little bit more durability as they look to put, continue this push onto Chanimal's and continue to burn down the mana of Cubsy. Yeah, it's looking better and better for Method Orange here in game number two as they look to tie it up. Chanimal's in danger. He's refusing to make a trade, makes it very late. Potentially an opening to crush him through it. 
And then Orange are trying to go for it and find it. They want to put a point on the board and advance in the rest of this series. Grand Finals, best of seven. Mez now getting counter pressured though. Seemingly out of nowhere. Darkness and Spearlink Totem once again a panic attack for Method Orange, but at least they stay alive. Now they've got an opening to kill Chanimal and they're going to close it out right before that punishment could have came in from the Super Frogs. The series now brought one to one. A lot of pressure coming out onto the Super Frogs though. You are, you are sorry, on Method Orange from the Super Frogs. You can see in those final moments overlapping those defensive cooldowns, but all in all, Method Orange is going to be able to take this one. And Zico, the first thing that you said when I said, who would you predict for the entire series you would say just based off the fact that it's best of seven it is going to swing more in method orange's favor and the reason for that is going to be small maps now we actually get to see them on one yeah the small wap the small map is going to work out very very nicely for method orange when cubs goes for the drinks it opens up a nice opportunity for them to actually get that pressure out you're going to have a lot of uptime as well because of the small map and i like the composition that method orange went with it's not as good maybe as the rest of druid version but there's a lot of comfort here and on dollar and sewers you can definitely exploit the fact that uh, their druid needs to go for drinks and see do he doesn't at this point in time he has a lot of mana still left to work with Channel Although he's gonna be very very far behind activating his uh, unending resolve here nice uh, pet interrupt there from Maz Sidu as well doing a good job just keeping his team aggressive actually throwing out a couple of purges here knowing that this is the all-in he has the spirit link totem to work with they have the darkness to work with at this point they know we just need to keep aggressive on the channel if we fall behind then that gives Cubsy an opportunity to kind of retreat and uh, get his mana back so it's better to just kind of purge and make sure that we stay ahead use our defensives to stay in the fight and they do a good job here method orange but now we can also expect a large map from the super frogs and depending on what method orange locks in we could see either the mage warlock or the double warlock come out from super frogs now obviously when we did see this first it was a 3-0 but we said that those games in the 3-0 were very close now we have a series that is a one and one the games were close as well what does this series have in store we're going to find out who wins na after this it was basically what he played exclusively with a little bit of Demon Hunter, but... There was a lot of Demon Hunter. A lot of Demon Hunter, a lot of Windwalker Monk, uh, but we haven't really seen too much of it from him just yet. I'm going to be looking to make sure he has a really good performance in this game because they're going to need it if they want to take the swing match against Super Frogs on this map against this composition. Can't disagree with you there. Method Orange needs to be going on all cylinders if they do want to take down the Super Frogs. But the Super Frogs let up here and they throw away one of the large maps. You have to say Method Orange may be able to just take this cleanly. Yep, they most certainly can, but it is going to be an uphill battle. We have seen this Elemental Shaman Frost Mage composition devastate melee cleaves, and that is exactly what Method Orange are playing here in game number three. Trill getting bursted down early on. Snuts trying to sneak in crowd control, not able to find it. Denied by Grounding Totem. Good defensive play on Sidu's part. Now, in the meantime, this is what we were critiquing from the team of the Pumpers in Europe, is that they need to coordinate their three Maledict training gets at the same time for a big push and it's the same condition for method orange here to take down wealthy man i want to see all three members coordinate one player launch first to bait out the dispel then the second player launch and the third player after that if they can combine their three gladiators maledicts in this order they can complete the puzzle force a major defensive cooldown or net themselves a kill Yep, and I was just looking quickly at what Trill was running in terms of talents as well as Azerite traits. In this match, he's running the Turbo Fist as well as the Expel Harm and the Ride the Wind. So the Ride the Wind, uh, once he uses the Flying Serpent Kick, it'll drop a little bit of a cloud. I'll make sure to point it out if he does use it soon, what it looks like, but it basically allows everyone in that cloud to get freedom, and it can be very effective against the Frost Mage at reaching the target once again, especially useful for helping out Mez or Sidu if they are chasing him down. Well, the man is trying to play at the starting room entrance. That has now dragged Sidu into center field. Curious to see how they plan to play around this. Yes, it's going to be polymorphing up Sidu. Good positioning by the team of the Super Frogs to expose Trill and Sidu. Now they can switch their attention to Mez when Trill tries to retreat. Mez doesn't have the same type of mobility. Instead, using Death Strike on that Fire Elemental as he makes his way back out of line of sight. Good awareness on his part, catching himself a heal. But now they can switch to Sidu, who is the third member that was left behind at the end of that crowd control chain. And if they can keep doing what they just did right there deeper into dampening, certainly the Super Frogs are going to take this. 
Yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility. And looking at the gear, both Mez and Trill are running double bonded souls. So trying to help out Sidu with a little bit of additional healing and also has a haste proc on it. But I think most of these players in these tournaments are using bonded souls as that secondary trait to really boost the healing of their teams. So they have four of those just from Mez and Trill. I'm not sure how many Sidu are running, but that's definitely going to help them sustain during these moments where they're getting bursted down by Wealthy Man. It's not to allow them in the open a little bit longer keep up this pressure. Trill trying to push forward, but taking the brunt of Snuts's burst here. Recovered now by Cubsy. Cubsy even launching out Solar Rass to add in a little bit of extra damage. I think Mez managed to sneak away a Polymorph there with his Dark Simulacrum, but in the meantime, Trill is actually the one that's just getting torn apart. Touch of Karma trades for him. Mez wants to land a Polymorph. Unfortunately, now Cubsy is on Polymorph Diminishing Return, so it's not going to be super effective. However, I believe they're still likely to go with that crowd control chain. No, holding on to it, deciding it's not worth it. Instead, just going for raw pressure on Wealthy Man. A ton of damage. Good Maledict play here. Where's the follow-up? They don't have any follow-up. Would really like to see them commit as three members for that. Only one Maledict in that attack is not going to be enough to get an ice block. However, they are slowly and surely establishing a mana lead. Definitely still anyone's match here as we get closer to dampening. Yep, definitely. Cubsy now sitting down for a drink. If he can regenerate enough mana, this is going to be solid for the Super Frogs, and he did manage to do that. I think if Super Frogs can maintain this position, Method Orange, they're going to have to play really aggressive if they want to try to get some kills onto Melthy, Wealthy Man. They have to stay out in the open for some time. We kind of talked about for these cleave setups how important it is to get through the Temporal Shield as well as Cubsy's Iron Bark that they want to secure a kill. If they can't stay in the open long enough to get through those two defensives, it's unlikely they're going to be able to burst Wealthy Man down and actually secure a kill. So there is a bit of uptime required for Mez and Trill in this matchup to take down Wealthy Man. A nice grip into potential double stun, but Wealthy Man with a really quick blink was able to escape, and Cubsy was the only one that got caught in that stun. And as a result, Trill and Mez really weren't able to find the damage. Trill and Mez trying to pressure Cubsy, but on Tolveron Arena, that's going to be difficult to do as he is able to navigate away, and Wealthy Man and Snuts can basically play bodyguard for their healer, and it's really difficult to attack a healer against a Wizard Cleave, and definitely not recommended on the largest map in the pool, so Method Orange are going to then go back to a more standard strategy. It'd be interesting to see if they try and take the strategy that the Pumpers played and send one melee after Snuts, one melee after Wealthy Man, and play for a later game kill in that regard. So far, they don't seem to be wanting to do that instead just consistently looking for swaps to Cubsy as he is trying to get away nice ring of peace by Trill bouncing Cubsy back into the fight Mez connects two on one traveling storm thunderstorm by Snuts to try and peel them off of Cubsy but they're still managing to stay on his back now with that wild charge unlikely to be the case immediately switching their attention back to wealthy men but I do like that method orange are willing to mix it up if someone on super frogs compromises their positioning definitely playing for any edge that they can find yep there it is, Lightning Lasso on Mez. He's forced to trade out the Icebound Fortitude to try to avoid some of that damage. Lightning Lasso is a channeled ability, so as a player, if you trinket it or use a Stun Breaker like the Icebound Fortitude for the Death Knight, it will stop the channel and prevent any of that incoming damage. So Method Orange, they're opting to try to just avoid damage at this cost. Sidu has so much mana, he can't even spend it fast enough to keep his team alive, and that really could potentially be the problem. I don't really see Sidu going out of mana, but I don't know if he has he basically can't spend his mana fast enough to actually keep his teammates alive in certain situations. Mez now caught into the lightning lasso. Good burst here coming in from the Super Frogs. Can they take him down? Doesn't look like Method Orange will really have to commit too much. Cubsy still 100% mana. Been consistently sneaking off for drinks. A full hex has been secured by Snuts onto Sidu, but it doesn't look like Super Frogs really has the damage to get anything done with it. No, they do not. I'm hoping that Sidu expends this mana with the ability called Purge. They can remove heal over time effects during a big push on Wealthy Man and then crush him with nothing but pressure. That's definitely a win condition, assuming that Sidu can make it that deep into dampening and still have his mana retained. We do see Maledic fly in towards Wealthy Man, then Mez coordinates for the second, and then where is the third is now the question. No third Maledic, only two, but even with two, they may be able to get an ice block. Iron Bark and Kiting of Wealthy Man is slowing down the pace of the damage and denying that cooldown force. In the meantime, Snuts is trying to carry, similarly to how Swapsy needed to for his team as the caster not being pressured. It's your main goal to obviously maximize your damage, but also look to crowd control the enemy healer. So in this case, 
see do. Wealthy Man's job is to do as much damage as possible as well. It's basically everyone's job to do that, just baseline. But then also position Mez and Trill in a spot where Snuts is more likely to maximize his damage and get crowd control. Currently, Wealthy Man under fire, but with a huge temporal shield, bounces right back into the fight. Yeah, it definitely does. 15% dampening right now. Cubs he caught into the incapacitate. Mezzatril looking for a push. They might be able to take the first ice block from Wealthy Man. Oh, Iron Bark is it going to or what it actually is the defensive? Oh, it is Iron Bark onto Wealthy Man. Okay, that should be enough to keep him alive just now. But once that fades, if Method Orange can stay in, they might be able to easily get off that ice block from Wealthy Man. Trill and Mez able to sit through with this Earthen Shield totem dropped by Sidu. Nice thunderstorm there by Snuts, knocking them out of the safety of that defensive cooldown. Now Wealthy Man kind of all alone. Snuts has to play backup. Polymorph spam coming in from Wealthy Man. He realizes they can't counter pressure right now. They just need to stay alive. They need to buy time for the temporal shield. Shield. He manages to find it. Cubsy has to heal him up. He needs to stay alive before that procs, and ultimately it does. Wealthy Man will survive. Now Trill and Mez, they have to stay in there. They need to try to get Iron Bark once again. They could potentially run away, but if they keep running away after just getting Iron Bark and Temporal Shield, these cooldowns just rotate up so quickly that they're not really able to force out the ice blocks they need. I'm starting to think it's possible for Method Orange to win here on Tolveron Arena, and if they can take the biggest map in the pool away from the Super Frogs, that is devastating for the Super Frogs throughout the rest of the series as they do not have melee cleaves under their roster and Method Orange are basically nothing but. So they will take full advantage of that for the rest of the series if they can pull off a victory. I think Sidu is going to have to risk his mana at some point to use Purge and get aggressive with his team, but he's gonna have to pick his timing. If he picks the wrong one and burns out of mana, he's gonna lose the game. If he picks the right one, he's gonna win the game. So everything rides on Sidu here to try and carry the team deeper into dampening. In the meantime, they would like to try and get ice blocks out of the way without having to expend mana to purge, but so far they haven't had any luck. Yeah, definitely. Wealthy Man getting a little bit low. He gets interrupted. Can't blink. Looking for frost bolts. Yeah, that's, that's definitely dancing with the devil there. Wealthy Man, if he got interrupted on that frost bolt, he could have easily gone down without being able to use his ice block. But he manages to pay off. Now Wealthy Man still looking for Polymorphs, looking to survive. But big burst damage coming in from Trill and Mez. Wealthy Man blinks away. See you caught into the hex. Good counter pressure here on Trill with no Diffuse and no Karma. Trill is very vulnerable. He can't sit out in the open for too long. Nice Temporal Shield as well as the Thunderstorm by Snuts. Will keep Super Frog stable for now. But Trill sitting in the open with no cooldowns. He is forced to retreat, hide behind the pillar, especially with these Polymorphs on to see you. Method Orange get swatted away for the time being. Yeah, Method Orange are still being denied on that ice block objective. Their main goal with killing Wealthy Man. Now Snuts with the lightning lasso to save an ice block potentially. Good timing on Snuts' part, doing his best to allow his team victory here. Icy Veins gets popped. No Frozen Orb though. This is very peculiar timing. Oh, he's the Frost! Why did he pop Icy Veins there, Ven? I'm not sure. That's a good question. But he got locked on Frost, and that was a very scary call. I almost lost my mind. Wealthy Man could have potentially gone down there without using the Ice Block. And at 33% dampening, having not used a single Ice Block, that would have been a complete blunder from the Super Frogs. Now Incapacitate gets used out by Trill. Wealthy Man tries to deflect with the Temporal Shield once again, but Sid, like you said, he uses Icy Veins. That's his main offensive cooldown. Wasn't able to really get any damage rolling whatsoever. That was definitely mistiming there for the Super Frogs and a potential lost opportunity. Two Maledicts fly towards Wealthy Man. Cubsy's able to dispel. The third one does land. Looks like it's good. Oh. Wealthy Man blinks away. He needs to try to avoid the Ice Block, but things are snowballing out of control here for the Super Frogs. Method Orange, they have a huge lead in terms of momentum. Method Orange finally coordinate together for a three-man effort to get that second and final Ice Block of the match. Match. If they can coordinate together now with Purge, Sidu has saved up just enough mana to get a couple. They're going to easily crush Wealthy Man on their best map on their comp advantage. They're going to take the swing match if they can manage to pull this off. And likely the rest of the series, they drop Spearling Totem to stay aggressive and race the Temporal Shield, find the kill despite the disadvantages provided by the Super Frogs. And now, if you're the Super Frogs, you are not happy. <laughs> and and you said it as well while you were casting. You said it before we got into this one. If this map didn't go the way of the Super Frogs, it seems like they are out of their depth. This was the map that they definitely did want to try to have that win on. It's a big map, and I would assume we're going to be going big again in the next game. But after this one, there just isn't that much left to work with. Zico, how is Method Orange able to take this third game, their second win in this series? 
Well, all, all the way up until this point, they really didn't manage to find too much pressure, but Sidhu also managed to hold on to a lot of his mana. Then at this point in the game, they force out the ice block, then they get the next ice block with that touch of death of Trill, uh, barely actually uh, having that hypothermia come off on Wealthy Man, but he does manage to find the block, and then here they raise the Temporal Shield. Sidhu is doing a good job, a wind cheering Cubsy, and they just apply a lot of pressure there, uh, and the first block was, of course, forced at the back of those triple maledict combo so uh, method orange is playing to their win condition here which is to, to get to a little bit of dampening and then yeah. triple combo the maledict trinket get the block then use their actual offensive cooldowns get another block and then just stay aggressive and they manage to do it how much do you want to see c do stay on a shaman is that something that we want to see throughout this series I think it looks like a comfort pick for him. Uh, bringing in Sidru against the boys was definitely necessary, but I think against this team in particular, Sidru can afford to stick on the Shaman, at least for now. That, great, that game seemed great for them. I mean, they weren't really that scared. There was a few moments where Trill really didn't have too many defensives. There was good offense from Super Frogs, but for the most part, it seemed like they were in the driver's seat. Sidru did a really good job with his wind shears, his purges when he needed, as well as those grounding totems to keep his team aggressive. All right, very important thing to note as we do get into this next draft. So what we're potentially expecting is a bigger map yet again. It is going to be the choice of the Super Frogs. You really don't have many of them left, so it's getting scary for them already, even though this is a best of seven, so we're not on match point yet. Sid, what do you think? The, uh, go ahead, Ben. Yeah, I have one thing I want to say. Why don't they play Double Destro again? That's, I think, what we all kind of want to see. It seemed like they locked it in blind. They won easily. I don't even, I was thinking about, I don't even know what method one could potentially run. It just seems like it's such a solid composition. If that comes I, back and just wins game after game after game, it, it, I feel like, honestly, if it wins the next game too, and I, I know that this isn't, and, and feel free to make fun of me for saying this, but I feel like that's one of those comps where if you win with it again, you instantly put them on tilt. Like, that, that, there's no way that that doesn't get into your head. I, I remember the first time that you watched Method Orange lock in. It wasn't Method Orange back then. It was Method Synergy. But you watched them play Double Demon Hunter. Nobody knew what to do. Everybody got tilted. Everybody got flustered. And they won the entire tournament doing it. And then it became a, a, a meta composition. I feel like you have that little extra salt that you just throw in their eyes the second that you lock in the comp. Well, it's also one of those compositions you can't really prepare for. There's not that many people running double destruction Warlock right now. Snuts and Channel seem like they're both, I mean, obviously really good on Warlock. There's not too many teams that Method Orange could potentially war game to get practice against that. There might be a composition they could run that makes them afraid, but I don't know what that is. Yeah, and uh, yeah you love to see Snuts back on the Warlock as well. I, I, I can never stop thinking about the, the story that you told me when you actually had a chance to talk to Snuts and he was talking about his career in general and, and some of his regrets with multi-classing. And now we see him in that position here again. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to you have to fill a role in your team as well, right? So you have Channel on the Warlock. You, you can't really have two Warlock mains, right? And out of the two, who is the better flex player? It's got to be Snuts. He plays Shadow Priest, he plays the Ali Shaman, he plays the Rogue. He just plays a lot of different things. But uh, what he told me back then, uh, at the last BlizzCon actually, was that he didn't, uh, he kind of regretted just not all inning on the Warlock and just becoming the best at it. He felt like he, he became really good at a lot of different things, but at the end of it, it came down to being the best at that one thing, similar to, uh, for example, the Move or Method Orange, who were like the Windwalker DK experts or the RPS expert, or even uh, in Europe, we had, uh, you know, a lot of one-trick RMPs, uh, feral uh, jungles, uh, things like that. Just uh, the alley outlaw, of course, as well from Method Black. Uh, just a lot of teams where they kind of specialized on one class and just really perfected it. I feel like that's the play to make as well later on in the expansion. But every team also needs a flex player. Uh, I think that Snuts has to fill that role in Super Frogs. And he, I think he does a phenomenal job with it as well. When you're in league play as well with something like this, with how AWC is actually set up, it just does seem like having Snuts play the way that he is playing is the most valuable thing on the face of the yep. planet, right? I, I really do think that that's why the Super Frogs, we expect them to be a force in North America, potentially the top team even. That, that's very much on the horizon for them. Well, I just think in a team like Super Frogs, Snuts is the best suited flex player. But if for Snuts sure. were to have a team that he built around himself, where he is always going to be playing the Warlock, kind of similar to, let's say, Warrix uh, over on uh, XRB last year, then all of a sudden uh, you can utilize him way more with his 
just warlock in depth gameplay, right? Yeah. But on a team like Super Frogs, you already have, you know, a lot of people who just play that one class. You need somebody who can play a lot of classes, and for sure, Snuts is that guy. D, it's it's a hard question, but do you think it's still his best class to play? Do you think it's still his best spec, even playing Destruction? Uh, it's hard to call, honestly, but I think that. Uh, <sighs> He looks really good right now on Rogue as well, of course. I think he plays it even more and he just prioritizes practicing his Rogue mainly. So I think Rogue is probably his best uh, class right now. But still, I feel like if he puts down the same amount of effort into his Warlock as he does with his Rogue, I, I can't help but think that's nuts. Is you know, it's nuts. He is the like yeah. since, since back in the day, you know, when when we watch Van compete with him, for example, it's it's always been snuts on Warlock. That when you see snuts, you just see you know, a warlock. Then, uh, when you're competing and you're actually in a place like that where you're on that class that you're known for, does that give you... A, we, we are going to see Chan uh, once again on the Warlock and we're going to see Snuts on the Rogue. We'll talk about that in a second, but I do want to know, do you feel like you get like an added boost of confidence that can actually be important or do you think somebody who has been multi-classing so long doesn't even get that extra adrenaline rush when they're on Warlock? Well, I think for Snuts at this point, he's just been playing so many different classes for so long. It's really been a long time since we've only seen Snuts uh, play the Warlock. I mean, he's been playing the Rogue a lot, like Zika was saying. I think even the last time he was competing with Sidu, when it was Sidu, Snuts, uh, with Sam I Am, they were still playing Rogue Mage, and that was years ago. So yeah. Snuts has been playing the Rogue for a very long time, and he's picked up tons of different classes, including Windwalker Monk and Warrior, which we haven't even seen him bust out in the tournaments just yet. But I feel like for Snuts, it, He's got to have a lot of faith in Channimals on the Warlock. I know he does, as well as Wealthy Man on the Mage and Cubsy to just flex as the healer. And I think Snuts, if he practices any of these classes, he can pull it off at a high level. And obviously his team has a lot of faith in him as well, letting him play these different classes in the tournament, matchup after matchup after matchup. And it can become difficult. Don't let it fool you. Snuts is doing a great job. When players are going from Rogue to Elemental Shaman, now they're a Shadow Priest, it, or now they're a Warlock. Like. You really have to change your mindset a lot of the time in these matchups going from game to game, whereas a team right now like Method Orange, they're just they're playing the cleave setups. Uh, it's the same mentality a lot of the time for them, similar strategies, but when you go from a caster to a melee, different types of casters, your role really, really changes and it can become difficult to sort of maintain uh, play at the highest level. It's not like he's playing the same archetype. You completely have to change everything about what you do. Positioning, when you push in, when to get aggressive, what you're trying to get. It's, it is so impressive to see what Snuts does. But Sid, I feel like you don't like the comp that they did lock in here. I've play double Warlock. I don't know. I don't know what it loses to that they're afraid of. I mean, do they even know what it loses to? Have they tried it? I mean, they've won. I mean, they've <laughs> tried it. it Aside was, from <laughs> one game, have it, they, is that why they're, they're afraid of Windwalker DK? Okay, I, I, you can't say they didn't try it. They looked fantastic on it as well. I mean, think about those little plays that actually netted them the win with it. it. It came down to Warlock buddies teleporting each other all over the face of the earth, peeling for each other with every DR known to mankind. I, it definitely looks like they had practice on it. And with that, I think we can assume that they also know what it loses to. They're scared of something. Well, it could be this, since they are on the blind, they have the best map in the pool, and they still didn't lock it in. So I think it has to be Windwalker DK Shaman, right? Uh, that, that, that seems like a pretty astute observation there. Ultimately, we're all left here asking for the double Warlock. Method Orange seems to be happy enough with this. Let's see if it's enough to get them on match point. Yeah, the last time we saw this matchup, Trill fell quite quickly, wasn't able to get his karm off right in the opening stages of the game. So I think this is going to be a much more realistic uh, view of how this match actually should go. As long as everyone is using their defensive cooldowns, Shanimals gets interrupted, grips out of line of sight. Good burst here for Method Orange. Cubsy not over committing, using his innervate right away. And you'll see really good wrestle druids. They'll use their innervate. They can load up their team with heal over time effects. The damage just isn't stopping here for Method Orange. Channels finally stabilizes, but another death grip gets Channels out of position, trying to counter pressure now with the Infernals. Yeah, rain of fire. This cast ball could hit huge. Mez denies it. Trill follows up, but he's still low on health. If Channel can sneak in a chaos bolt here, it's going to be big. Connects that on Trill. Tons of pressure. 
Sudo not wanting to choke under that, doesn't want to overlap cooldowns, but if he gets spell locked on a heal like that, Touch of Karma now has to be traded. Maledict to soak up the healing. He gets feared off the back end of the spell lock. Chanimal on fire right now, just decimating Method Orange. Trill trying to stay alive, but he get gets get destroyed in the opening stages of this fight. Chaos, Chaos Ball connects. No that way! That was big, big plays on Chanimal. That was the sickest Warlock plays I've seen this year. Completely <laughs> owned Method Orange. <laughs> All right, Super Frogs. This is maybe why they went for this composition. We are going to see Janimal play out of his mind, Ben. Ben, how did that happen? Usually I ask Zico, but the expression on your face while that actually went well, down. I was I was saying right before that happened, I was like, this game's going to play out a lot differently. Everyone's going to be using the defensive. The trail actually managed to get it off, but like Sid said, Chanimal's had some sick plays, managed to find a beautiful interrupt into a full fear, just completely owning Method Orange. And the damage on the trail was just unbelievable. I think maybe Sidu got overconfident with the heal, or Method Orange got o overconfident with the heal Sidu had available with that Ascendance. But once that didn't land, Trill was in full panic mode. He had to use everything. Didn't really have too many cooldowns to rotate through once that Karma was down. Zico, walk us through the entire game right now. So Chanimal has worked through pretty much every interrupt here in the game, except for that wind shear. He goes for the fear, gets interrupted, throws out the Chaos Bolt, spell lock CD right there at the end, and then he gets the fear over onto CD out of that spell lock, and then Snuts, look at Snuts as well. We gotta give him a huge shout out here. Normally a rogue will kidney trill there. Instead, he goes for the kidney onto Sidu. Chanimal gets the Shadow Fury, loads up a fat bolt and serves they serves it to the mayor of Trillville. <laughs> <laughs> Fat Bolt served up on a silver platter to the mayor of Trillville, and that is going to be a very impressive win from the Super Frogs. What else do they have in store? Who did note there in the TLDR, but Hook Point is going to be our next map in our tied series. Whoever does take this one finds themselves on match point in the battle for NFA. B NFA. NFA. BFA. I, I, BFA, I BFA and NA. BFA and NA. Holy Battle man. for Azeroth in North America, Cup number three. Grand Finals all tied up. Super Frogs with two, Method Orange with two. This map advantage in favor of Method Orange as well as a comp advantage in my mind, but Super Frogs, they've been doing work in this series so far, finding nice setups. Really is up to Method Orange to make sure they're deflecting these all-in attacks from Super Frogs. And if they can do that, I think they can definitely walk away with this game. Thanks, man. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are tied up here in this grand final for the North American region. Method Orange lead the charge here with tons of pressure over onto Chanimal. How much damage can they get out here initially is the question. If they can pull more than just Iron Bark, it would definitely be crucial to finding victory, but they are not finding that just yet. I like Cubsy's positioning at the starting room. If the opposing Demon Hunter Trill decides to march his way over there to get mana rifts. Trill will then move out in the open and Chanimal can free cast on him. Definitely top tier positioning here from the Super Frogs. Yeah, definitely Snuts caught in the root right now, not able to get too much done. He actually commits his Vanish. What is he going to do with it? Looks like he sets up for a Garrote onto Trill. Potential kidney shot. Chanimal's lining up a Chaos Bolt, but really no stun to be found just yet. Snuts holding onto it. Finds the kidney shot now on Trill. But with no crowd control on Sidu, I think Trill's going to be able to easily deflect this attack. Yep, he's got more than enough cooldowns banked up to trade against the Super Frogs here on Game 5. And this is not match point just yet, as this is a best of seven grand final. So if you're a Method Orange fan or a Super Frogs fan, we aren't going to be deciding the champion off this win. It will be the one afterwards, potentially. So far, Method Orange have a lead. I'm very surprised to not see the Super Frogs try their double destruction warlock into this composition. We were saying that maybe they're hesitant into the Windwalker Death Knight, but this time they would have known, or, no, they would not have known what was coming their way, so they did blind lock in the Rogue Warlock, but if they do know what's coming their way, I want to see that double destruction Warlock make a return for them. It definitely performed great against Method Orange earlier on. Snuts is trying to solo Sidu, popping Vendetta and really looking for an early kill. Maybe with some coordinated Maledicts they can find it. Not likely. They don't go for it. Sidu should recover. Pairing that Ascendant with Pack Spirit, trying to heal the team for free. Good combo of that Azrite trait and the spell Ascendance from Sidu. Immediate recovery and it's free, so nice trade. This map, though, is advantageous for Method Orange as they can easily deny Cubsy from drinking.
drinking, although right now they're not doing the... Okay, never mind, Cubsy couldn't drink for that long because Chanimal was taking too much damage, potentially just getting destroyed here in game number five. Manages to recover. This is Nuts now trying to set up. Gets Sidu's Gladiator's Medallion with that blind. Potentially, we see Sidu be the kill target here on hook point. Now that Snuts has created that opening. Yeah, definitely. Sidu could be in some trouble. Chaos Bolt gets interrupted. If that Chaos Bolt went off, it would have been good night, Sidu. Good backup there from Mez and Trill to keep him alive. Now Sidu out of line of sight should be able to easily survive. So Nuts committed his kidney shot. Mez and Trill are going to be looking healthy. Cubsy's mana is the only thing in this game that is not looking healthy, and I don't think he's going to be able to sneak away and get a drink, especially on this map. Trill has been all over him so far. Cubsy looking for more heals onto Chanimals. Chanimals does have the unending resolve, so he could potentially try to make an offensive play, trade that out in order to buy Cubsy a little bit of time. Now Cubsy into a full hex. Nicely done by Sidu, but Mez is the one that's taking most of the pressure. Chanimals gets gripped away from Cubsy. Cubsy has to find some heals, manages to find some onto Chanimals to keep him alive. Sidu has to play catch up here onto Mez. You look at mana, Sidu is just so far ahead in this match. Yeah, definitely creating a significant lead for himself here on hook point, facing the Super Frogs in the grand final of the North American region. The Super Frogs are looking to try and tie point earnings with the boys, but if Method Orange can win here, they will not. The boys will remain in first place in terms of points, but it seems to be a three-horse race in North America. That fourth place spot still up for grabs and a lot of teams looking to get it. That of Storm, that of Rejects, most notably, as well as Never Lucky. There's a lot of teams competing for that four spot in North America. Trill gets bursted down. Mez makes the trade to deny. Will it be enough? It does appear to be the case. Anti-Magic Zone's protection saving the day. Cubsy trying to sit down for a drink again, but not able to find really any mana off the back of it. The lead is slowly building for Method Orange. Yeah, definitely Chanimal's getting gripped behind the pillar once again, away from Cubsy. He gates back to Cubsy, the safety of his Restoration Druid, trying to get some heals. Cubsy moves in, finds the bash onto Sidu. Trill now into a full kidney shot. How is he going to respond? He trinkets out. Darkness gets dropped out as well. Nicely done. That's exactly what he needed to do. That was a scary situation. Sidu still has his trinket and spirit link as well, so they have that to fall back onto if they really need. Sidu with a nice tremor totem on the fear of Chanimals will keep him in the fight and keep his team aggressive. Trill trying to find the damage onto Chanimals. Cubsy almost completely tapped on mana, and this is where Method Orange is going to start really ripping into Super Frogs. Cubsy with no mana. Chanimals is just going to be getting lower and lower. There has to be some semblance of counter pressure here for the Super Frogs, but it just seems like Method Orange, they have all the defensive tools that they need. Except Sidu, he actually doesn't have a trinket. There's still a window of opportunity here for the Super Frogs. Chanimals trying to get something done with his unending resolve. There's no trinket on Trill, no trinket on Sidu. They can get CC. They just need to hold on a little bit longer, but I don't know if they have enough time. Chanimals getting low. The kidney shot on Mez. Spearling Totem gets dropped out, buying Method Orange enough time to take down Chanimals and claim game number five. And once again, a small map going to work for Method Orange. Zico, is that going to be the tale for the rest of this series? Well, I think Method Orange can honestly close it out already in the next big map, unless we see Super Frogs switch off this Rogue Lock Druid. You can't rely on Chanimals just having this monster performance okay. to actually win that. I don't think they're favored at all in the matchup in general. Big map or small map, I think Method Orange should win that. I think it, it just comes down to Chanimals just being an absolute animal. Yep, let's talk down. Uh, let's talk about some of the actual moment-to-moment -moment plays before we start to look ahead to what can happen next. So here, again, we're at the situation where Cubsy has no mana, there's no Iron Bark, and of course the unending result is the last opportunity here, but Chanimal is just taking too much pressure. Sidu dropping that Spirit Link. He's going to deny that kill opportunity before it even happens. There was one opening, though, onto Sidu there. Had Chanimal been able to get off that Chaos Bolt onto Sidu in a stun lock that would have potentially been able for uh, potentially been enough for them to be able to close the game unfortunately for him though too far behind not gonna find the opening and now method orange probably just gonna lock in the same thing again with the demon hunter and super frogs have to respond that's the question how do they respond can we see the double lock that i want you more want than anything lock. what right. maps are left mugambala double warlock Mugambala double warlock could have. <laughs> it could have. That's the dream scenario for us all. That's what we all want to see. <laughs> I, I want to see. I want to see another 20 maps of Mugambala warlock, warlock versus it warlock, too. warlock. But maybe we do see it one time. We, we do have to think about the rest of the map pool as well, though. Very important. Sid, what are the reasons that you want to see the double warlock? I think it's just a solid composition. 
it's just very well rounded both defensively with demon armor and the recent changes to druid and warlocks and then obviously channel and snuts have a lot of experience in the match in terms of game awareness so they're always standing in perfect positionings they're always supporting each other exactly when they need to you would normally expect the weakness of that composition as they share the same diminishing returns so there would be a bit of overlap or miscommunication but they looked coordinated in the one game that we saw them play and i would like to see them bring it back at a certain point here. I think their victories with the Rogue Warlock have often been fluky. Not that they weren't perfectly executed, but they could have just been shut down by more efficient trading and better shot calling on Method Orange's yeah. part. So relying purely on the enemy team to make a mistake to win is not where you want to be in a tournament setting. So I, I would like to see them consider it, at least try it. Uh, when they know what composition is coming their way and they can set up where they want to play. Tiger's Peak, neutral map, not really trying to tell us anything as far as strategy. Now Method Orange have to decide, do we win Walker, Death Knight, blind? I'm assuming that that's what they will do because they're more afraid of the double Warlock, but if they blind pick the Demon Hunter, Death Knight, and I'm Super Frogs, I lock in double Destro. I just, yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say, I really hope Method Orange isn't hasn't lost confidence in their win Walker, Death Knight. I think they just had... Two horrible losses, unfortunately, but I think it was just little misplays that caused them to lose those matchups. I think they could lock it in again. I want to see that confidence with their Windwalker Death Knight, as I think it probably is their best blind pick. Yeah, it could be a strong pick here. I think that that's fair. I think, though, when we look back on the side of Super Frogs, yeah, you see that they're not going to go for it. That potentially could be a little Double bit of Destro, shakiness. Please. Well, Zico, here it uh, comes. you're talking about how you like Destro or how you don't really like Destro and and that rogue here in quite a few of the matchups that does seem fluky as well. We're hearing that from other people on the panel. Do you think that that does mean that we go for maybe not double Destro, but a different composition hands down here? Uh, I would say they tried the Mage Ellie. Didn't look that great. I don't think the Mage Warlock is going to look that great either. I want to see double Destro. Right. Why not? I can't think of a reason. They won this matchup already with the double Destro. Of course, that was on Nagrand, but this on, is Tiger's Peak. It's, it's kind of similar to Nagrand in a lot of ways. Um, I, I just don't see the Rogue Lock Druid. They've lost with it twice already. Sure, it wasn't small maps, but I, I feel like their wins was harder to replicate than Method Orange's wins would be on a medium-sized map like this one. Yeah. And I I honestly just don't see Frost Mage Ellie killing anything in Method Orange for a long period of time before Wealthy Man kind of becomes, you know, poor. Sure. Uh, I, I think, too, when you do look here uh, at what the Super Frogs have, they're going to go for... Now, we saw this already. They're going to go for Warlock and Mage. This map is about as close as you can get to Nagrand. I, I think that's also a very important thing to note. It is one of those more neutral maps. We saw this on Tolveron, I believe, uh, th this matchup in the first series. Is that correct? I uh, it was no, it was with the Munkin. It was with Sam. Oh, it was against the Munkin, correct. Uh, so how do we like it here now when it is going to be going against, instead of uh, the Munkin with Sam I Am, Mez going to be on that Death Knight? Uh, I still think it's the same win condition here for Method Orange. Uh, they just need to conserve their mana into dampening. As long as they don't focus too much on trying to mana burn Cubsy and keeping him out of the loop, I feel like Method Orange their mana is more valuable than allowing Cubsy to drink because then they're going to just expend too much mana trying to stop that and then they could lose potentially because of that. So I feel like if they conserve their mana and then they do the triple mana deck combo push onto either Wealthy Man or to Channel, that's their win condition and they could close it out potentially here. I feel like the Frost Mage in general is just going to need a whole bunch of dampening before uh, the damage is going to be effective enough to actually take somebody down on Method Orange. I think that all these things are very important to keep in your mind as we do head to Tiger's Peak. Method Orange is going to be able to win the entire cup here. Super Frogs are trying to extend it to a game seven. We've seen so many different comps out of the Super Frogs, and now we're going to see this one again. It is into a different damage dealer with Mez going to be on that Death Knight instead of Sam I Am on that Moonkin. Maybe we don't get to see Double Lock in this series, though. I, I'm really curious. I, this is one of those moments where I kind of wish we had the players here so we could get an interview after. I wonder what they are scared of. I, I wonder what they're worried about, why they don't go for it again. I don't know either. They already won with it in one match, and it was a pretty convincing win. It wasn't that scary for the Super Frogs, but they feel like maybe it's not the best matchup on Tiger's Peak. Potentially, we'll have to give them the benefit of the doubt. But I think bringing in Wealthy Man 
When we saw this matchup play out when Sam I Am was on the Moonkin, they really focused on controlling Trill on the Demon Hunter as much as possible. It was all about Nova Trill. When he gets dispelled, put him in a Polymorph. Another one, another one. Now he's feared. He gets dispelled. Into another fear, into another fear. And that amount of crowd control coming in from the composition, the Mage Lock Druid that Super Frogs has available, gives Cubsy a little bit more time to actually extend his mana pool and really limit the amount of mana rifts that Trill can get. So if they can do that and pull that off, Mez becomes a very vulnerable target later on in the game on that Death Knight. Super Frog's just going to have to hold on and put out lots of crowd control. Eventually, the Destruction Warlock and the Frost Mage damage will become very significant on Mez, who won't be able to just Death Strike through it. Exactly. Mez becomes a juicier and juicier target, Seiko, as those Death Strikes start to do less and less as we get deeper into dampening. And Trill is going to be, on, on, in the same breath, one of these damage dealers that can continue to keep himself up with different things like Soul Rending. He's going to have that constant leech. So how do the Super Frogs make it into the late game? Well, they just got to utilize the cross CC that we saw them play uh, in their match on Tolvern Arena. Uh, to Superfrog's credit, they played the comp really, really well. They always had a fear onto Sidu and a sheep onto Trill whenever uh, Method Orange left that pillar, and then they focused that third target with a lot of damage. So I feel like uh, Superfrogs have been playing the matchup very well, but their win condition just is later on in the game. They need to stall out the game to a point where they the Method Orange have to go for that push before they just die to a wee damage behind the pillar. And when that happens, Cubsy needs to be in a situation where he has a lot of mana and they need to just have good card control on Trill and a lot of damage onto Mez and try to push him down through all of his CDs. And Death Strike is just going to be too good uh, combined with the Frost Mage damage being a little bit too low before, uh, you know, a 40% maybe dampening mark happens in the game. It is week number three of the AWC. This is the grand final for North America. Method R your reigning BlizzCon champions weren't even able to make it into the top eight the first week. They have bounced back. Now they are on a war path. If they win this, they will take down the entire cup. But Super Frogs stand in their way. Currently, the number two team in all of North America. Yeah, we'll have to see what Method Orange can get done in this game there on match point. If they win this, they win the entire tournament is going to be exactly what they want. Missing out on points in the first week. They need to be securing as many as possible if they want to get their spot at the Spring Finals. Interrupt on Sidu. Mez taking a little bit of damage early on, and it looks like Super Frogs or Method Orange, they're going to be going for a split strategy. Wealthy Man trying to control up Trill, who's just sitting on him. Mez taking an absurd amount of damage right now. Channel, that was his Infernals. And Method Orange, they are really respecting it. They're sitting at the pillar. They don't want to throw away another game just by letting Channimals do whatever he wants. And I think that's a very intelligent decision. Method Orange are on match point now. If they can win this, they will be the champions of the Spring Cup number three of the Arena World Championship Series. It's looking good so far here as Wealthy Man is isolated and forced into his first ice block. Moments into the match, we have not seen ice blocks forced until dampening earlier on in the series. And Super Frogs are already on match point. Having that major defense blown out early on is going to just add to the pressure. Yeah, Wealthy Man, he's not going to be much of a threat at this point in the game when Trill and Mez can just sit on him, limit his Frost Bolts, limit his ability to put out a Blizzard, even killing off his pets. It is really hard for Wealthy Man to get counter pressure. It's really going to be up to Channimals in this matchup to make sure he's looking for crowd control on Sidu. He's finding Chaos Bolts in this match to really try to make Mez and Trill back off Wealthy Man. If not, Wealthy Man's going to be in a world of pain. Yeah, most certainly a world of pain indeed. We do see Sidu caught in crowd control as Channimal tries to set up to counter aggress. Channimal has definitely been the MVP for the Super Frogs here today. Can he do it? Can he carry his team back here? They need to win two in a row to take this. If they can manage to do it, they will then tie the boys first place in terms of points almost guaranteeing themselves a spot, I would think, at the spring final. So it's definitely important for them. A lot on the line if they do want to accrue the most amount of points, not to mention that the, uh, the highest amount of points earned can secure a guaranteed spot to the world finals. So securing first place consistently or a top three is definitely of utmost importance to all of the teams in this tournament competing in this season. Cubsy getting mana rifted down. Trill has secured a massive lead. Ooh. Polymorph stolen by Mez. Potential ice block force for Method Orange, but Wealthy Man denies it. Great temporal shield timing once again, although that lead is still establishing itself. 
how is Cubsy going to manage to sneak away and regenerate Nana? It's pretty much required at this point. Yeah, wealthy man and channels are going to have to find crowd control on Mez, Antril, and C to keep everyone locked down in place. But with wealthy man kiting to Cubsy, it becomes more and more difficult for Cubsy to realistically get away, get a restealth, and try to regain some of his precious mana. Although he does sneak away. I don't know if Method knows where he is. He's sitting down. He could reset his mana completely. This is disastrous for Method Orange. Cubsy basically gets a full reset here. Still drinking as much as humanly possible. And now Wealthy Man gonna be fine. He has a Temporal Shield. Cubsy connects the Iron Bark to play catch up. He did trade out a little bit of his defenses there to get that drink off, but it was more than worth it. And Super Frogs have maintained and actually have now a massive mana lead. Really well done on the part of Cubsy to secure his team that late game fight that is pretty much required against this composition. It's so durable. Method Orange have brought it, and obviously Method Black have been utilizing it as well. That Demon Hunter and Death Knight paired together bring so much self-sufficiency that Sidu effectively doesn't even have to heal them. He can just focus on denying casts, breaking up crowd control, and keeping his team aggressive. Certainly, Mez now caught into a stun, fear on the Sea-Doo. And you can see Trill still chasing down Wealthy Man as Wealthy Man does manage to find a Polymorph. To slow him down just a little bit, Cubsy snuck away and got another drink in this matchup. Sitting on full mana, things are looking good for Super Frog. Sidu is going to have a more and more difficult time actually keeping his team alive and aggressive in this matchup. Trill hasn't been able to find the mana which we normally see. Now Sidu sitting down for a drink. Chanimals and Wealthy Man moving in, making sure they can actually stop him. Now Mez on 50% health. Do they have the damage to take him down? I think with the pillar, with Sidu backing him up, Mez is going to be fine in this situation. But Cubsy once again taking an opportunity to get away. Reset his mana. Now he's at full mana once again, entering dampening. And this is the exact situation you want to be in if you are Super Frogs. And Cubsy setting his team up quite well here in game number six, but they're still on match point. Making one mistake will cost them the entire tournament. They cannot afford to. They've been playing excellently in this grand final, but they need to overcome this composition that has been crafted. The Demon Hunter and the Death Knights seems to be one that is so difficult to thwart. We saw the team of the Pumpers manage to overcome it with their Warrior and Death Knight composition, but Super Frog simply don't have that as an option. So Ooh. they're trying to navigate a different route to victory against it, focusing much more on crowd control. Really, the only mistakes being made by the Super Frogs are on part of Wealthy Men, giving Mez the opportunity with that Dark Simulacrum to steal Polymorphs and then apply them to Cubsy. Wealthy Man definitely needs to keep an eye on that. That's an opening that Method Orange will look to exploit later on now that Dampening has begun. Inevitably, this game will close because healing will just simply become ineffective and it's still anyone's game. Yep, Cubsy sitting in the backfield should be able to keep Wealthy Man up. Like you said, it's really going to be up to Wealthy Man to make sure Mez is not taking these polymorphs for him. That's going to be a lot of generated pressure for their team if they are able to find it. Cubsy sits down for a drink once again, and this is not how we normally see Method Orange play this matchup. Normally, we see Trill easily be able to hunt down Cubsy in this matchup and consistently st stop him from drinking, get the mana rifts on cooldown. But this is just a completely different team. It seems like Cubsy's just been able to easily sneak away so far in this matchup. Maybe this is not the strategy that Method Orange want. Maybe they think they can actually just take down Wealthy Man regardless of mana. It doesn't really matter to them. Temporal Shield gets used by Wealthy Man. Another Polymorph gets stolen by Mez. Nicely done. He's been doing such a good job with that Deathland ability, Dark Simulacrum, to steal Wealthy Man's Polymorphs, get crowd control for his team. But now Mez could be in some trouble. Chaos Bolt connects. He deflects it with the anti-magic shell as Sidu was caught into a polymorph. And Sidu's actually opting to play relentless in this matchup. So he's going to be caught into fears and polymorphs, and he won't be able to trinket out of them, but they'll all be reduced in duration because of that relentless PvP talent. Now Wealthy Man trying to get some counter pressure here with the Frozen Orb. Mez still in a little bit of trouble. Is that Spirit Link actually dropped out by Sidu as well to keep his team alive? Mez's HP just isn't going up. The damage from Super Frogs is too high. Now Sidu into a full polymorph. Mez forced to retreat, but Channimal's there looking for some Chaos Bolts. Switches it over to Mez. Another polymorph coming in from Wealthy Man. That was his Icy Veins as well as the Dark Soul and the Infernal. So Super Frogs committed a lot to that all-in attack, but they managed to get huge cooldowns. Yeah, I mean, Trill still has Darkness, so he can definitely save the day. That Ice Block that Method Orange got earlier in the match basically doesn't matter at this point.
this point. Now that Cold Snap has become available for Multiman, he'll have two more ice blocks for the rest of the match, which means Meth and Orange need to clean up their offense. They need to coordinate that Gladiator's Maledict three at a time to take out Wealthy Man, or at least get ice blocks out of the way. Wealthy Man definitely can't afford to keep making these mistakes on the dark simulacrums of Mez. If he gives a polymorph during a push, there's a Maledict activation by Mez, dispelled by Cubsy, and there's no follow-up. Definitely uncoordinated attempt there by Method Orange. That then gives Super Frogs a lot more room to breathe, securing further crowd control over onto Sidu. But before Dampening is a tad bit deeper, it's going to be too difficult to puncture through the defense of the classes that Mez and Trill are currently playing. Pressure is finally mounting towards Wealthy Man. Cubsy struggling, although his drinks earlier on in the match have definitely secured himself an opportunity here in the late game for his team, playing it out to the bitter end. But ultimately, if they do manage to win, we're going to a game seven, and it will be the comp and the map advantage for Method Orange. Sidu still locked down in crowd control. Mez at the pillar, line of siding. Trill ducking around now as well. They're going to switch to Sidu. They've got him caught midfield. He's running relentless. They need to back him up. Lots of damage flying in. Astral shift from Sidu should be enough to survive. I really like that swap to Sidu. Great targeting by the Super Frogs. If they can make another move like that, they definitely could close this out, bring it to game seven. Yeah, there's no question about it. With the out without the benefit of the Astral Shift, he could easily fall down, but I don't think Mez and Trill are going to make that mistake again. They can't leave Sidu behind in that situation. Cubsy's man is still doing really well. Honestly, the control from Chanimals and Wealthy Man has been quite high in this game. Mez taking quite a bit of pressure. Earthen Shield Totem gets dropped out by Sidu to reduce some of that incoming damage. Nice cap stun coming in from Sidu to slow down Wealthy Man. He blinks away, gets gripped back in by Mez, trying to avoid some damage. A beautiful shadow fear from Chanimals, setting Wealthy man up to actually get some cast off get some damage rolling full polymorph on trill now mez having to retreat behind the pillar once again i think cd's actually looking for a drink but that gets shut down there by channels with the rain of fire in the meantime though cubsy he manages to sneak away i think he's at full mana and that's a full reset there for the super frog wealthy man he has both of his ice blocks channels every single defensive cooldown but method orange they still have a chance at some point in the game these cleats set us they managed to overwhelm for an extended period of time yeah, i think the targeting needs to change here for method orange but they're falling behind trill trying to hide around the corner very low on health that soul rending healing so much ineffective and he's not benefiting from it when he can't attack. Wealthy Man blinks in to try and close it. Trill denies it for at least a second, but will it be enough? CD is still crowd controlled. Spirit Link, good shot calling. No overreaction on the side of Method Orange despite that scary situation. But I would say that it's just going to increasingly happen. Uh, there's no mana lead anymore. There's no pressure lead. There's no cooldown lead. This game is slipping away from Method Orange, and I think we're going to be going to a game number seven. They make the swap. They need to try and gun down Channimal. They can't. They don't have the time to get through two ice blocks. But if they try and push right now, Channimal has Infernals down. He could get a kill with his Chaos Bolt. Gets denied. They have to avoid this Chaos Bolt at all costs. They go for the Maledict play. They're looking to close here and push to game seven. They deny it further. Channimal still just wants it. If he can get just this one. One Chaos Bolt, he gets gripped. He's desperately trying to find the one Chaos Bolt. He's not able to get it just yet. Maybe they go after Sidu. Uh, there's the Chaos Bolt, but now that Dark Soul has faded, the threat is basically lost, and now Method Orange need to go for the kill. This is exactly what they needed to do. Go on Channimals. He was setting up way too much, way too much pressure, and now Trill and Mez, they have a target they can actually heal off of, which is so important. Full Polymorph onto Cubsy, stolen once again by Mez doing such an excellent job. Cannibal's having to retreat, heat gates away, but Mez and Trill, they're gonna be chasing him down. This is looking like a completely different game with this target choice swap. Cannibal's burns through his unending resolve. That's the Iron Bark as well. Method Orange is looking good. I don't know if Cannibal's is gonna be able to recover, tries to get away with the Mortal Coil, looking for a cast bolt. Mez could be in some trouble. Anti-Magic Shell has to get traded out. Sidu needs to keep his team in the fight, but he's got no mana left. I think Ooh. he's actually hurting a little bit. Another Polymorph stolen by Mez. MB P of the team, if they can take down Channimals off the back of these Polymorphs. Mez has been doing such an incredible job, but I don't know if they have the damage to really push uh -oh. Channel over the top. Sidu has no mana left whatsoever. Super Frog's looking to stay in this tournament. Mez once again with the Dark Sim of the Crumb. Did he get another crowd control? No way Mez is going to be able to survive. Darkness gets dropped out. Sidu has no mana, no Spirit Link, no nothing. And Mez ultimately will fall. Super Frog's tie up this series. Mez plays out of his mind there. Gets so much CC across the board. Mostly of the the back of that dark sim but the super frogs going to be able to turn him into a target and they're going to be able to bring
bring us all the way to a game seven. Zico, how did we even make it this far into dampening? We were talking about how it could be difficult to potentially get this far into the game. Let's break it down piece by piece. Well, it just came down to the Method Orange. They did the mistake of trying to shut down too many of the drinks. Basically, when you go for the shutting down the drink strats and making sure that Cubsy gets mana rifted the entire game, if he gets one drink, that strat becomes completely reset. The other thing is, as well is, when dampening is at 20, 25%, there's no reason to go after that Frost Mage anymore. They finally do go after the Warlock, but at this point, they've invested so many cooldowns chasing after that Frost Mage. I also don't like that CD was going after it for those purges, but in the end, I don't think it mattered too much as he was crowd controlled up there. But the main thing that it came down to, honestly, was target selection on the side of Method Orange. They should go after the Warlock. The Warlock is the big thing. Threat. The Warlock is the one with all the disruption. The Warlock is the one with the big burst, not the Mage. The Mage is basically just there to kind of stall out the game and land CC. But even when he lands CC, as long as you're shutting down the Warlock's Chaos Bolts, it's not going to be too scary when he does get those CC. So a couple of sloppy mistakes there, honestly, on uh, the side of Method, uh, uh, on Method Orange. So we talk about target selection potentially being the thing that does need to change. What are the chances that we actually see this matchup again, though, in the final game of the series? Do you think these comps are close to what we're going to be seeing? I think it's going to probably be Roguelock Druid uh, for the final game. We're going to see a small map. Maybe Ruins is still in the playbook, I think, right? Blade's Edge also available, I believe. Super Frogs has to lock in blind. Yeah. Uh, they haven't won a single game against that composition as Roguelock Druid. I think that'd be really risky. I don't risky think they lock it in blind. Th that'd be crazy, I don't think they right? lock in Mage Lock, though, on like Blade's Edge. Don't is there any I world I, I just have to double ask? Destro? Yeah, that is right, double de I'm all for mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, they don't get to pick the map, right? It's Method Orange's map. Method, map Method yeah, Orange. I doubt need, that they will pick Method Orange. They need to set that up. Huh. I don't think they want to set no that way. up. I think, <laughs> I think we're going to a final resting place, maybe, or... How does that always happen? It didn't, it didn't happen for a, a whole day yesterday. I don't think it happened a single time yesterday. Today, it has it, happened. It did happen once. Maybe, tops. But and, and yesterday was like six series, so it didn't happen that many times yesterday. But uh, it never happened yesterday. Uh, ultimately, uh, there are, okay, it, it's a premium small map. A lot of the times, teams want to end it on a small map. Whatever. We look right now. Is there any world where we do see Double Dash Trail? I, I mean, you asked it. Zico, you started to answer it. Sid, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Do you think that we go for the double Destro in any world? Runes Lurder has the best map for it. I, I really do think it would be the best map to go for it. And maybe they face Windwalker Death Knight. But we've seen Trill's Windwalker be a bit shaky throughout the series. So that could be a weakness that they try to exploit in game seven. That composition looked the most solid overall. I mean, their rogue lock play was stellar, like top level, but it was off the back of big mistakes. Whereas the Destruction Warlock doesn't, the double Destruction Warlock doesn't need to really rely that heavily on mistakes of the opposing team. They can just overwhelm them. So I I would like to, if, it, if it's Runes of Lordaeron and they know, well, actually they're not going to know if Windwalker DK is coming. If it's Runes of Lordaeron, go double Destro all in. That's it. There are a lot of pressure points where mistakes can come in, though, with the double Warlock. That is the one thing I will say. Uh, it, you're not even just saying, like, you're going to be hitting the same DRs and you could potentially mess up CC, because I don't think that's going to be the problem. I think it all comes off the back of the peels, off of potentially saving your partner. Black Rick oh. Hold, this makes a lot of sense. Also, not a bad map for potentially double Destro. You can be kind of safe with it at times, but you're not going to have those long lines to be launching those spicy Chaos Bolts. Uh, I don't think we're seeing double Destro on this map. I think Probably it's Rogue, either. right? Rogue Lock Druid would make the most sense, but they've been winning with Mage Lock Druid. Maybe they just feel more comfortable with it and they lock it in. I don't think Mage Lock Druid... Uh, no, I, I don't think they will win if they lock in Mage Lock Druid. I think Rogue Lock Druid is the high percentage play for Super Frog to lock in blind. And then Method Orange probably going to go with the Shaman and the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight to close this one out. Do you think that there's any world that even though they have lost with it so much that the lock does come in here just based off of what we see with Black Rock Hold? I mean, they could. I mean, it's a comfort pick for them, right? Snuts on the rogue. We kind of talked about how we feel like that really is his main PvP specialization right now. Channels on the warlock, and then you have Cubsy on the restoration druid. Definitely comfort for the super frogs, but it hasn't worked out for them at all so far in this series. And I think it could be. I mean, but definitely their downfall if they do decide to lock it in. I would rather see them try to throw Method Orange a curveball once again, go with the double Destro. That's what I want, not just because of the memes, but because I think it's actually a smart 
strategy for them. Big Method Orange does not have a lot of practice against that composition. I can guarantee you that. That was the series, right? The, the last series that we saw, Super Frogs 3 0'd Method Orange like two hours ago or something like that. And it, it looked so impressive. And what did they do? They threw curveballs every single time. Method never got their footing. And all of a sudden, they're down in the lower bracket and they make it back. And yeah, this is kind of what we expected to see. The bright side to this is they're not being. They're not losing their confidence, right? They're saying this is the plan. This is what we wanted to run. We still think it looks strong. Black Rook hold a decent map for it but we just haven't seen the results so far, Zico. Well, I think this is for sure the higher percentage play for Super Frogs. Regardless of the results, I, this is what I would pick as well if I was Super Frogs. Sure. This is a final. This is game seven. I wouldn't just gamble it all on double Warlock. Uh, I would have liked to see the double Warlock, though, when they had the map pick advantage earlier on after they won the blind pick. I think they could have experimented with it a little bit. And then, based on how that went, they could have kept playing it. But uh, that's, you know, that's all hypothetical. And now we are in the present, and they are going to be playing the Rogue lock druid makes a lot of sense you have a, a close quarter and of course method orange as well are going to be responding with the demon hunter and the uh, dk shaman not a big surprise on either side here for me i think uh, Super Frogs, they're going to need to have a really, really solid performance on this map if they want to make this one count. I think Method Orange has the edge walking into this one. It, it, it's a pretty crazy feeling to honestly think in the back of your mind that Super Frogs could have won this series if they played more double dash trail. I think that's... I mean, really, maybe. Maybe we're wrong. I don't, I don't think the map is great for it, though. I, 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 I agree think that this, is, this, this map is a terrible but... map for double Warlock. I, th I think Tigers would have been a better map to pick it on. Agreed. I think... I think any map, honestly, that they've played so far would have been better. I think Black Recall is probably the worst, just because you can't do anything if Method Orange decides to do the Mogambala strat that we saw over in Europe, where they just AFK in the room, 20% dampening, they run out, and they start targeting the Warlocks down. I, I feel like it just allows them to have a full mana tank, it allows them to be super aggressive, and they can run on the Infernals and still come back, have even more dampening to work with. Uh, it's it's risky as well because there's so many points of line of sight. There's the pillar in the middle, Swifty skateboard ramp, the room. There's so many different play, places for Method Orange to dodge those Chaos Bolts. So they would really be relying on a good fear pathing when C2 doesn't have Tremor or Dispel and maybe capitalize on a big juicy bolt like that. So I think this is the high percentage place. You have Snuts. He's going to lock people in, in place. He can push in, fan of knife people down as well with that, fan of, uh, with that flying daggers build that we've been seeing from these assassination rogues. And also, Cubs, he can just go back and drink in the room and get, get them an advantage that way. Yeah, I, I do agree with you there. I, I do think, though, when we, when we talk about this series as a whole, we see less curveballs. I think that is the main thing that I, I kind of want to ask them if we do get a chance why they kind of settled into this composition more and more instead of going for some of those crazier plays that we saw in the first series that they did win. They still do have a chance here. I agree that seeing Snuts on the Rogue on this map in particular it could definitely work. Method Orange, Method Orange, once again, they're on these smaller maps, and this was something you said at the very beginning of the series. Sid, how do you want to see Super Frogs really mix this up with the composition that they have brought so far that they haven't really seen wins on in the series? I mean, they've seen a couple of wins, but Trill is no longer on Windwalker, and I think his Demon Hunter is a lot less susceptible to getting bursted down the way that the Super Frogs had been. However, I think... They're just capitalizing on mistakes. If Method Orange make no mistakes, they walk away with this. They've got the map advantage, they've got the comp advantage, but if they make mistakes, then Super Frogs is the team that will just tear that one error apart and they're gonna be able to take this. So there's a lot on the line, but Method Orange have set themselves up to succeed. Yeah, that, that's exactly what you do need to be paying attention to. And we've said it a few times, this channel playing out of his mind can result you in a win, but how does he play out of his mind? He sees an opening, he sees a mistake being made, and he finds a way to CC the entire team and then just burst them down very quickly. Like you said as well, Trill might not be a target that can fall like that when he is on the Demon Hunter. Mez, of course, before we get into dampening, he's going to have those Death Strikes to work with as well. He's also going to have the AMS, he's going to have the AMZ. He has so many different things that are going to make him a tough target to burst down that way, especially against the Assassination Rogue and a Destro Warlock. Yeah, I mean, this composition from Method Orange has been really solid in both North America and the European scene, both the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight, just really durable classes. And I think on these smaller maps, they really excel, especially with Trill on the Demon Hunter and Mana Rift. Sidu should be able to prevent uh, Cubsy from getting those drinks. And this is what we've been talking about all day long, all weekend long, 
as it's just such an important strategy for these cleavers to be implementing. You have to stop the drinks, you have to land the consistent mana rifts, and eventually channels, they're able to just burn through everything. It's just a critical mass and dampening where no longer is iron bark enough, then channels has to trade out the unending resolve, and then all of a sudden healing's not enough to even top him through that, so he just remains low, and Mez and Trill can just keep healing themselves up and keep high pressure on channels but we've seen super frogs they've found windows of opportunity in these matchups before with nice burst windows off the back of some really clutch counter spells from channels so there's definitely still an opportunity here for the super frogs to win this game but i don't think it's in their favor at all so if method orange does end up taking this too i think they end up at 220 points so that that is going to make them get into this kind of confident area for land i feel like so you have you have what three cups left each of those you can get a maximum of 120 points if you win the entire thing we've seen the metas start to calm down we know what a lot of these teams want to run i don't think we expect any of the teams that have made it to the top three to get any more whiffs right and method orange with that one week setback it, it, it was a thing that was scary, but I feel like a lot of that has subsided now. We can see our series is all tied up here. Super Frogs versus Method Orange. Who is going to take Blackrock? Hold, who is going to take this final map in the series? And who is going to find themselves their championship in the third cup of the AWC? Method Orange reigning BlizzCon champions as well. They really do want to get this year started on the right foot. Try to get repeat performance. And Super Frogs, this was a team before we saw Snuts on the lineup. The last year we were really saying they were so close to being one of the top teams in the world. They needed to tap into their potential and here with Snuts as well, they have already just had a better year than they had last year in a lot of ways. Obviously only three cups, but you look at them and you just say, how is this not a team that makes it deep, deep, deep throughout brackets? throughout the entire year. Well, we're gonna find out right now who the next champ is. No matter what, this is the last game of the day. So you don't wanna go anywhere. We were going to be crowning our champions of the North American Spring Cup number three. Can Method Orange secure a first place finishes? They've been battling it out. They've set themselves up here with a map advantage and a comp advantage. Super Frogs are gonna have to battle uphill, but Chanimal has been making play after play this entire day. If there was a team to be able to do it it would be the super frogs here and now infernals get dropped out now a basher on Tidu. he doesn't have a trinket full fear secured by channels what are they going to be able to make happen in this situation mez kiting away double mortal coil comes in from channels he's looking to play aggressive that's going to be the dark soul but unfortunately for channel mez and trill say no way and they run away they're going to be out of line of sight avoiding all of this destruction warlock damage i like the positioning from method orange in the situation Chanimals wants to play in this room, but it's also easy for Method Orange to just run away and line aside all of these offensive cooldowns Chanimals has available. And once those are gone, it's going to be easy for Method Orange to move in and continue the pressure that they need. Cubsy is playing Feral Affinity on this map. It will be difficult for him to reset, regenerate mana on drinks. So Method Orange can win the safe long game with the Mana Rift strategy. And in the short term, everyone stacks up. And if you're a Demon Hunter and a Death Knight, you can cleave multiple targets. So that's going to be great for them as well. I guess the downside is that Snuts' fan of knives will also cleave. Let's see what they can get done here in the starting room. Snuts is trying to develop pressure on multiple targets, but Channel is falling behind. Cubsy makes a trade to recover. Sidu dumping in a couple of heals. They are using Spell Locks on Trill's I-Beams, trying to deny damage output from him. But then if Spell Lock isn't available for Sidu, he can easily just heal the entire team. So it's an interesting choice from the Super Frogs to use their Spell Locks on I-Beam. I'm curious to see how it plays out for them in terms of maybe mana management into the late game. You can see on Black Rock Hold, though, that Fan of Knives really doing a lot of work. Good crowd control by the Super Frogs. They find an opening, and it's going to bag them in Icebound Fortitude, a very powerful defensive cooldown down super frogs to capitalizing on the errors of method orange definitely turning this map in their own favor this fan of knives build from snuts is definitely working out yeah it's super good when they're all clumped up he's able to get a lot of damage out get rupture on all three targets and that just makes it so the super frogs have three different targets three different opportunities in the match to actually land a killing blow trail now into a kidney shot are they going to be able to find the damage smoke bomb gets dropped out bash 
thrown in by Cubsy to take Trill down. It gets interrupted on the I-beam once again. Sidhu caught into the fold line. He trinkets out immediately, looking for the healing wave to top Trill off. Trill and Mez looking very healthy. Chanimal's the one that could potentially be in some trouble, but with the unending resolve as well, Cubsy using the Iron Bark, he should be able to survive. Chanimal's actually making an adaptation in this matchup. He's playing the Nether Ward, which will allow him to immune the interrupts coming in from Mez and Trill if he really needs to. Yeah, and how many times would he have been able to get a kill if he was able to get a Chaos Bolt? I think that was a smart decision from Chanimals to make that difference, to pick up Nether Ward so he can get Chaos Bolt cast during critical moments in the fight. Perhaps that could be enough for Super Frogs to take it here in Game 7 of the Grand Finals. Will the reigning BlizzCon champions be taken out by the Super Frogs, or will they get to reclaim their first place spot here today? We will decide in this final game. Right now, Cubsy is falling behind, but not nearly as significantly as I was expecting. Good denial on that wild growth. A very expensive heal during Innervate would have been free, so denying that bonus healing from Cubsy is going to put him behind on mana. Thorns activated onto Chanimal to try and allow Snuts and, or snar, allow Chanimal and Snuts more potential for counter pressure. Potentially with Thorns, Chaos Bolts, and Fan of Knives, they can counteract the self-healing of the Death Strike and the Soul Rending of the Demon Hunter, but at this point, it isn't the case. However, deep and depth it will be the case. Super Frogs going after Mez. Double crowd control. Chanimal trying to set up. Chaos Bolt connects. Not dealing too much damage there as Earthen Wall Totem was already activated by Sidhu. Catching a couple of healing waves. And they have been constantly kicking Trill and spell locking Trill on I Beam. So Sidhu should be less hesitant, I think, to cast healing waves. But after the game where Trill died to a spell lock, I, I don't blame him for being overly cautious. Yeah, I feel like Method Orange is being a little bit more sloppy. I don't know if fatigue has gotten to them, but Cubsy, he's been sitting down, drinking, hiding in plain sight, just a few steps away from Method Orange. Normally, early on in the day, Method Orange, they were on top of stopping these Resto Druids, never allowing them an opportunity to go for drinks, but Super Frogs has been able to maintain their mana in this matchup. Maybe Method Orange feels like they don't even need the mana lead. Eventually, with dampening, they can just take Channimals down. That definitely could be an option, but I still think it's worth stopping Cubsy from drinking when they can. It's not taking a little damage right now as well as Cubsy as they make a swap onto him. Mez looking to line of sight Channimals. Double Chaos Nova coming in. That's going to be slowing down both Channimals and Cubsy. Nicely done by Trill as he looks to get some cleave pressure on all three members. Now Cubsy almost completely out of mana. Trill been doing a really good job at making sure now he's landing these mana rifts and they've been adding up very quickly onto Cubsy and unfortunately for him he's already very low on mana as we move deep into damp or closer into dampening. Cubsy does manage to escape looking for a restyle. Trill looking to shut it down and I think this is really important. Now that Cubsy's behind on mana, Method Orange, they need to start looking to consistently stop Cubsy and eventually secure that mana lead. Yeah, Method Orange can just play it safe, just keep it together defensively and go for mana rift after Cubsy and deny him regenerating mana. Chanimal pulls the trigger on uh -oh. damage. Sidhu is the target. Is he going to falter here in game number seven? Mez is protecting him. Currently with that anti-magic zone, he's going to immediately retreat back to the pillar so he can line of sight Chanimal, activating that Spirit Walker's Grace and immuning the incoming interrupts and able to restabilize the team. It's now Chanimal on the back foot as Method Orange looked to make a push with that Imprison, but Snuts denies the connect with a kidney shot. Sidhu answers with a grounding totem on Chanimal's Chaos Bolt. Threats tossed back and forth. Denial on both sides. It's still anyone's fight here, even though Method Orange are etching ahead. Yep, Cubsy commits his Iron Bark there as well as his Thorns onto Channimals. He's going to be redirecting some some of that damage. Channimals manages to find a fear. Oh! Mez could be in some trouble. He gets the anti-magic shell off. That should be enough to make him tanky enough. Trill potentially overreacting with the darkness, but I can't really blame them. There's been so much significant burst opportunities for, for Super Frogs. You definitely don't want to throw the series away. There's only one game left. The winner of this game will win the tournament. Mez and Trill getting lower and lower. Another off kick there by Snuts. He's been doing a good job making sure he's rotating kicks on Sidhu when he is in range. But Chanimals is the one that's falling behind. Cubsy has to play catch up. He's caught into the asphyxiate stun. Mez getting low, caught into a kidney shot. He breaks out of that with Iceman Fortitude. Sidhu still has the trinket and spirit link to keep Method Orange alive. And I feel like the deeper this game goes, Method Orange are slowly but surely going to be pulling ahead in terms of the damage they deal to Chanimals. But Cubsy managed to maintain his mana, actually go for a little bit of a drink there to play catch up. Method Orange are just making small mistakes, and Super Frogs are capitalizing on them over the late game. And 
even though they're compositionally in map disadvantaged, I actually think the Super Frogs are etching ahead and likely to take this. They're going to take the whole thing. Sidu gets stunned on his trinket. They're gunning down for Mez. Is this going to be a Spirit Link totem? Sidu gets feared away. They use Spell Lock Control. I think it might have been more wise to save that in that position. They may have been a nice triple, triple stun by Chanimal. Sidu sneaks into Spirit Link totem, but now their defense is cracked. There's not much left. They're stacked up for Fan of Knives, and Snuts is tearing in. Yeah, Cubsy's sitting down for a drink as well, and Snutsy has the Vendetta. Method Orange, they're going to have to hold on through that cooldown. Mez certainly is going to have to use the Anti-Magic Zone as soon as humanly possible. Does have the Anti-Magic Shell. There's a full kidney shot. What is Mez going to do? Opting to sit it just now. Mez pulls the trigger on the Vendetta, looking to take Mez down. Mez responds with his Trinket as well as his Anti-Magic Shell. Snuts still taking quite a bit of damage. Safeguard Prox uses the Feint. Does have the evasion to fall back onto if he really needs, but Cubsy with the drink still doing great on mana. Sidu as well, they're about tied at this point. Cubsy moving in a cat form, looking like he potentially wants to find a bash. Finds it potentially on Sidu, but that was a beautiful Chaos Nova from Trill, catching Cubsy as he pounced over towards Sidu to look for that bash. Was able to shut that down, good plays. All right, can Method Orange stay alive for another minute? That's when they will have access to Trill's Darkness, the most powerful defensive cooldown. They may not be able to. Chanimal wants to close this out. I'd love to see another Ward Chaos Bolt. He doesn't go for it. I, I think another Ward Chaos Bolt might have at least banked him an anti-magic zone on that push. I think it was a huge missed opportunity for Super Frogs. They definitely could have pulled ahead. Sidu with that Ascendance activated is looking to try and stabilize the team, but struggling at 26% damage. And once again, sloppy play. They're just letting Cubsy drink in the middle of the map. He resets his mana. They've got no lead in that sense. They need to burst somebody down and overwhelm them at this point. They could have secured the late game advantage, but sloppy play is now allowed Cubsy to crawl back in this series and potentially take the whole thing. They're setting up for big damage here on Mez. How will they respond? Earthen Wall Totem soaks the hit. Nice grip and a triple stun for Method Orange as they try and reverse the pressure. They've switched their attention to Snuts. They're focusing a lot more on him, but that could leave Channel open, and I don't think you want to leave Channel open. I think you're right about that. Cubsy gets interrupted. Snuts could be in some trouble, but he's kind of baiting them. He still has the vanish. If he gets in too much trouble, he can vanish away. That'll give Cubsy enough time to keep him alive. Triple stun setup coming in from Snuts off the back of that vanish. Now getting aggressive on Mez, who's caught into a kidney shot. Double coil coming out from Channel's onto Sidu. He gets caught into the Shadow Fear as well as the Bash. Darkness saving the day for Trill, keeping Mez alive. Method Orange hang on by a thread, but there's really not much left for them to work with. I mean, it's do or die. They have to kill Snuts. They've got no mana really left in the tank. They've got cooldown, so they can just push forward with nothing but aggression, but they're going to leave Channel open. They're going to leave all of the Chaos Bolts open at 33% dampening. That's really risky, but they, they have got no other choice. There's too much defense for Channel. There's too much mana on Cubsy. Mez is burning the candlestick down quickly with Icebound Fortitude now out of the way. They desperately try and grip Snuts to the pillar to burst him. They're not finding it. Cubsy stabilizes. This Thorn's damage is going to be way more devastating at 35% dampening. Sidu is basically tapped out on mana. He's got Spearling Totem and Anti-Magic Zone. As soon as those are gone, it's basically it for the Method Orange here in Game 7. Cubsy, is he sitting in oh, is he open again to get a drink? He's finally denied, but Chanimal has secured a full fear onto Sidu. Mez is isolated. Can they take him down? They aren't able to connect. Trill is peeling Snuts away. He's a bit reluctant to overextend. Actually, some hesitation here on Snuts' part. I guess they see the advantage they've got in terms of mana. Snuts doesn't want to throw the game, so he's playing it more slowly, allowing his whole team to then push forward. Stun on Troll, they make the swap. They're trying to catch him off guard. Triple Shadow Fury again, secured by Channel. Dark Soul available. Infernal's in 10. Super Frogs are looking to take it. Everything on the line at 40% dampening. Sidu gets caught into the fear. Trill in midfield. Who is Super Frogs going to be going after? All three members looking prime at this particular point in the game. Channel taking a little bit of burst. Now a full kitty shot on Mez. He does have the anti magic zone. If he drops or if he has it available, he might need to use it. Dark Soul Infernals gets used by Channels. They need to avoid Channels at all costs. Snuts uses the Everyman for himself. Racial breaks out of the stun, looking to close out this game. Fan of Knives fans coming in. See who's getting lower. How are you going to keep your team alive? See, you got the Spirit Link totem. He needs to make sure he drops it in the nick of time. But Super Frogs just seem to have all the advantages. They're all dead. Sidu, what are you going to do? Off the back of Sloppy Plays, they're just all dead. Super Frogs have done it. They battled uphill, disadvantage after disadvantage, but have managed to conquer the Spring Cup number three. They just took down the reigning BlizzCon champions, and not only did they take this third cup? I believe they are now tied for first place in the entire region with the boys, the Super Frogs. 
managed to do it. It's a very different series, though, than what we did see the first time around when these teams went head-to-head, -head, and we saw Method Orange originally get knocked down to that lower side of the bracket. It's a much tougher fight, and you can see that we really do have three top teams starting to define themselves in this region. Absolutely insane performance at 41% dampening. They finally have enough Super Frogs push in with that final Infernal. Sidu has no mana left to work with. That Spirit Link Totem is not going to do too much when the entire team of Metal Orange is just rotting down. Channel's going for the Cataclysm. The Infernals are down. Everybody is getting AoE from Snuts' fans of Knives. He's putting up Garot on everyone, even on Sidu there towards the end for good measure. And Super Frogs finally, after a long fought finals, take them down. And for the second time today as well, and you are correct, Rich, they are tied for that first place in the standings with Method Orange now as the second seed uh, in the region. Crazy, crazy cup. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, ultimately, I guess you say Method Orange is third, right? Because yeah. you, you have those, for the, they're tied for first, but still that's going to take up two slots. And let, let's take a look at how the entire tournament did go, because when you think about that fourth team, right? And you think about that, that additional team that's going to make it to LAN, because that's really the reason that we care about the standings right now. It's going to be because of LAN, the move. This is a team that you expect in North America to make it to land. This is one of the best performances we see. They make it to the broadcast day today. They hadn't been making it to Sundays. If they can keep getting here, they can keep getting in a fourth place position. Do you think we see them at land, Ben? It's definitely possible. I mean, we're only halfway through. We're three out of six cups down. So the move still has just as many opportunities as they've had to get further on in the tournament. Like you said, if they can consistently get that top four, get a second place, maybe get a first place, depending yeah. on what happens. I mean, who knows how the game's going to change in these up and coming weeks. There's definitely an opportunity for this team to start picking up those points and make their way to the spring finals. It's like a, you, you kind of see on the desk right now who's like the glass half full or glass half empty person because it's like, oh, we're, we're only we're only halfway through or we're already halfway through because it's tough to actually call it right now saying how far uh, in we actually are, but it's not as linear as it just being a, a cup that's either half full or half empty because the meta could change as well. That's not something that we can necessarily predict, but we can take a look at what the standings are now the boys and the Super Frogs tied at 300. Method Orange is going to have not the safest of safe third placings, but a decently safe one. It's going to be Storm right now, who is your fourth seeded team, and the move is tied with the Rejects. Everything here in North America is going to be quite crazy. We know Never Lucky right now with 100 points could still catch up. Yeah, it's there's a race for fourth. Yeah, fourth. <laughs> there's five teams right now within 30 points of each other for that fourth place 